What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I wanted to do a quick video just talking about Windows 11. Now, I remember about a year ago, there were a bunch of videos that came out, articles and all that stuff that came out about Microsoft embracing open source as well as Linux. And then I also remember seeing an article where they donated a whole bunch of money to Canonical, which is the owner of Ubuntu. They're the one that manages it and everything. That's the kind of like the parent company that pushes out Ubuntu. And pretty much everybody was talking about this, how Microsoft is embracing Linux, how they really want to see open source technology move forward and all that stuff. Well, after playing around with Windows 11 for a while, it looks like they were playing almost like a long con in the way they embraced open source. Now, I'm not sure about the developers at Microsoft or the people that actually design windows 11 but it looks like they ran out of ideas and so in order to have like a backup plan plan as far as the design of windows 11 they went at the open source community to get ideas and that was the whole plan all along in my opinion now i don't know how true this is but after playing around with windows 11 for a while it heavily looks like a Linux operating system that I'll show you in a few minutes. So let's go down and show you Windows 11. All right, so I'm at the login screen for Windows 11. This is a system I upgraded to Windows 11 just for this purpose, just to do a video on it, as well as play around with Windows 11. You guys know I don't talk about much Windows products on my channel. I try to stick strictly to open source and Linux, but Occasionally, I have to throw in some Windows stuff because it's all generalized tech in the operating system. So let's log into this thing. But that's the login screen. It kind of looks similar, you know what I'm saying, to other distributions I've seen. But let's go down and log in right fast. Type in my password. There we go. All right, so this is Windows 11. And I know you guys have all seen it pretty much. They, there's plenty of videos out there on Windows 11 and got something opening up on there right now. This is my first time logging into it today, but there's plenty of videos out there on Windows 11, sh basically showing you the features and all that stuff. But I want, so I wanted to just kind of point out a few things that I thought that was directly taken from Linux distributions. So if we click on the start menu right here, we all have seen it. You know what I'm saying? That's the start menu. Well, one thing I wanted to show you guys was the settings. Uh, and this kind of heavily ties to KDE Neon. I've already seen the memes and I was wanting to make this video a while back, but I had to take a break from the channel to catch up on some other things that I, will wor I was working on. But if you look at the settings menu right here, this heavily looks like KDE. And I know you guys have seen the memes. They say it's like a, a bad version of KDE, but this is exactly what the settings menu looks like in KDE. And I'll go down and pull up my KDE desktop environment and show you guys, but you know, you see the system, you know, Bluetooth devices, networking, all that stuff. So all this is basically that systems menu. And then you can also search up here, you know, and it gives you all the information about the system and you can make whatever settings changes that you want. So let's switch over to KDE now. And here is my KDE desktop environment. So if we go right over here to the settings, you know, system settings, uh, it's pretty much the same thing, man, as you can see. Uh, and it kind of, I don't know, I kind of feel some kind of way about this. I'm like, uh, it looks to me that Microsoft ran out of ideas, you know, as far as the developers, and they just decided to still design from open source, which I mean, it's fine. It's, it's really not stealing because it's open source. You can use it for whatever you want based on the licensing that's apply to it but since they've you know been embracing it you know i'm pretty sure they've 
they got the weight to actually basically take whatever they want so as you can see you know this is basically the exact same thing yeah on kde is broken up into different groups you know what i'm saying uh versus in windows it's just a straight straight list of everything but it's essentially the exact same thing in my opinion and at the bottom it seems like they kind of you know took the same thing for mac os you know by throwing all the menu all the buttons down here at the bottom on the taskbar right in the middle you know what i'm saying which you could do that on linux as well you can just basically move all this to the center and it'll center it you know what i'm saying you could do that in any linux distribution depending on the desktop environment that's installed so that was one thing interesting that i saw within windows 11 that they in my opinion kind of took from the linux and open source world and the next thing I kind of wanted to show you guys on Windows 11 that they've made a change to uh, is the desktop environments. You can have multiple desktops. Now we all know where that came from because Linux has been doing that for years. You have multiple desktops that you can have with different applications so you can switch back and forth. And that was one of the main reasons I switched to Linux because of the various desktops that you can have and it helps with my workflow. Well, that's something that Windows decided to add as well. So you can add another desktop. You can add as many as you want, which is the same thing that you can do in Linux. You know what I'm saying? You can have different things open on one desktop. Like for instance, uh, I'll open up the file explorer here and then boom, we can go to our second desktop and we can open up Edge or whatever browser that you have installed. Uh, which edge is trash, you know what I'm saying? But uh, you can have multiple desktops, you know, just like in Linux. But just to play around with Windows 11 a little more, just to kind of show you guys some of the stuff. Uh, this is the Microsoft Store, and which, I mean, it always looked like an app center or one of those uh, application centers, you know, that you would see in android or you would see you know in a linux distribution or whatever uh they kind of condense it down a little bit more um and to me it kind of looks like uh the gnome app store you know what i'm saying that that you can go to to me it kind of looks like that uh a little bit you know what i'm saying but they've always had their own app store which i never really use you know what i'm saying but uh they i just wanted to kind of show that to you guys but one of the next other cool things I wanted to show you guys was the widgets that they have now. Uh, so that's that's super cool. You know, you can click on the widgets and it'll bring up different news and all that stuff that's, you know, tied to your Microsoft account as well as your advertisement ID, which is something I really don't like. But, you know, that's part of it right there you know what i'm saying i just kind of wanted to show it and it has the time up there which is super cool and i didn't play around with the settings too much in here and i don't want to click on it because it'll show my account information but let's go on and close it out uh you just click on the desktop somewhere and it'll go away and then also to kind of just show a few of the features that other people have shown already you can right click on the desktop and it'll bring up this new menu right here. But if you wanna see the old settings that they used to show, you can hit show more and it'll bring up those settings like you normally would see. Like it'll open up display settings if you want to, personalization, you know, those same options that you would get. But one thing I thought that was super different is that Microsoft started calling their command prompt terminal. So it's Windows terminal which I thought was kind of weird as well. I'm like, uh, okay, when did uh, Windows Store calling their command prompt the terminal? So, I mean, I understand it's terminal emulator, but basically opens up PowerShell. But I mean, to me, it seems like they're really embracing open source and Linux by, you know, using terms that are used in Linux, you know, and kind of meshing some of the features together that are typically exclusive to Linux, which I kind of don't like, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like they're creeping into that open source arena by using terms and making the, 
environment looked the same i guess to kind of bring all the linux people back over to microsoft which i don't see that happening because of the privacy issues that they have in my opinion you know a lot of the information that you do on the system is sent back to microsoft so and they say you know it's to improve the operating system but who knows what they're doing with that stuff i'm i'm sure they're selling it off and using it to get advertisement money which is fine i understand your business you're trying to make money you're in a business of making money but when it comes to compromising your users privacy that's something i cannot agree with you know what i'm saying now i have to use windows for work you know what i'm saying every position that i've held we have worked in a microsoft environment you know what i'm saying from microsoft servers you know the desktop computers that we all use or whatever um every position i've worked in has always been a windows environment with a little sprinkle of linux here and there so i understand the, in, the importance of having to learn windows you know to its potential especially if you want to be successful within the information technology field you have to know windows because it's in pretty much i would say like 99 percent of the environments that you'll run into but as a personal desktop environment i definitely wouldn't recommend it you know to anyone i know it's a lot of people that do have it you know it's no way around it that's how all, pretty much most computers come you know when you purchase them they come with some version of microsoft windows but when it comes to the whole privacy aspect i always push people to linux and one thing about uh windows 11 you won't find internet explorer at all so <laughs> i think they went in on and dropped it so if you type in like internet uh and let's type explorer just to see if it comes up and it won't come up uh you may it may be a feature you can add or they may have completely removed it but microsoft edge is finally the default browser for windows 11. So you won't be able to go back to Windows Internet Explorer, which I recommend people, you know, use the Brave browser or something like that, you know, to try to protect your privacy as best as possible. Now, lastly, this is, you know, Windows 11. I'm not that much of a fan, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm just really playing around with it because I know it's eventually going to come into the work environment and I have to learn it and get adjusted to it. It's not that difficult of a transition from Windows 10 to Windows 11. Pretty much everything works the same as in Windows 10. It's just a lot of aesthetic changes. And in my opinion, they stole it from, <laughs> from Linux and the open source community as far as the design and the way they made changes to different things like the settings and all that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, leave comments down in the comment boxes below. And of course, keep it techie.